So in the last two videos, we were talking about this constrained optimization problem where we want to maximize a certain function on a certain set, the set of all points x, y, where x squared plus y squared equals 1. And we ended up working out through some nice geometrical reasoning that we need to solve this system of equations. So there's nothing left to do but to just solve the system of equations. Uh, we'll start with this first one at the top, see what we can simplify. We notice there's an x term in each one, so we'll go ahead and cancel those out which is basically a way of saying we're assuming that x is not zero, and we can kind of return to that to see if x equals zero could be a solution. So maybe we'll kind of write that down. We're assuming x is not equal to zero in order to cancel out, and we kind of can revisit whether that could give us another possible solution later. But that will be two times y is equal to lambda times two. Uh, and the, from here, the, the twos can cancel out, no worries about two equaling zero. And we know that y equals lambda. So that's a nice simplified form for this equation. And for this next equation, uh, we can use what we just found, that y is equal to lambda, to replace the lambda that we see. And instead, if I, can, if I replace this with a y, uh, what I'm going to get is that x squared is equal to y times 2 times y. So that's 2 times y squared. And I'll, I'll leave it in that form, because I see that in the next equation, I see an x squared, I see a y squared, so it might be nice to be able to plug this guy right into it. So in that next equation, uh, x squared, I'm going to go ahead and replace that with y squared. So that's 2y squared plus y squared equals 1. And then from there, uh, simplifies to 3 times y squared equals 1, which in turn means y squared is equal to 1 third. And so y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 third. Great. So this gives us y, and I'll go ahead and put a box around that, so we have found what y must be. Now, if y squared is equal to 1 third, then when we look up here and we say, hmm, 2 times y squared, that's going to be the same thing as 2 times 1 third. So 2 times 1 third. So if x squared is equal to 2 thirds, what that implies is that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of two-thirds. And then there we go, that's another one of the solutions. And I could write down what lambda is, right? And we can, I mean, in this case it's easy because y equals lambda, but all we really want in their final form are x and y, since that's going to give us the answer to the original constraint problem. So this, this gives us what we want, and we just have that, that pesky little possibility that x equals zero to address. And for that, we can take a look and say, if x equals zero, you know, let's go through the possibility that maybe that's one of the, one of the constrained solutions. Um, well, in this equation, that would make sense, since two times zero would equal zero. In this equation, that would mean that we're setting zero equal to lambda times two times y. Well, since lambda equals y, that would mean that for this side to equal zero, y would have to equal zero. So, so evidently, you know, if it was the case that x equals zero, that would have to imply from the second equation that y equals zero. But if x and y both equal zero, this constraint can't be satisfied. So none of this is possible, so we never even had to worry about this to start with. But it's something you do need to check. Just every time you're dividing by a variable, you're basically assuming that it's not equal to zero. So this right here gives us four possible solutions, four possible values for x and y that satisfy this constraint and which potentially maximize this. And remember, when I say potentially maximize, the whole idea of this Lagrange multiplier is that we were looking for where there's a point of tangency between the contour lines. So just to make it explicit, the four points that we're dealing with, you know, I'll write them all here. So x could be the square root of two thirds, square root of two thirds, and y could be the positive square root of one third. And then we can basically just toggle, you know, maybe x is the negative square root of two-thirds, and y is still the positive square root of one-third. Or maybe x is the positive square root of two-thirds, and y is the negative square root of one-third. Kind of monotonous, but just getting all of the different possibilities on the table here. x is negative square root of two-thirds, and then y is positive, no, negative, that's the last one, square root of one-third. So these are the four points where the contour lines are tangent. And to find which one of these maximizes our function, here, let, let's go ahead and write down our function again. It gets easy to forget. So the whole thing we're doing is maximizing f of xy equals x squared times y. So let me just 
put that down again, we're looking at f of xy is equal to x squared times y. So we could just plug these values in and see which one of them is actually greatest. And the first thing to observe is x squared is always going to be positive. So if I plug in a negative value for y, right, if I plug in either this guy here or this guy here where the value for y is negative, the entire function would be negative. So I'm just going to say that neither of these can be the maximum because it'll be some positive number, some x squared times a negative. Whereas I know that these guys are going to produce a positive number. And specifically, you know, if we plug in, if we plug in f of, let's say, this top one, square root of two thirds, square root of one third, well, x squared is going to be two thirds, and then y is square root of one third. And in fact, that's going to be the same as what we get plugging in this other value. So either one of these maximizes the function. It's got two different maximizing points, and each one of them has a maximum value of two-thirds times the square root of one-third. And that's the final answer. But I do want to emphasize that the takeaway here is not the specific algebra that you work out going towards the end, but it's the whole, the whole idea of this Lagrange multiplier technique to find the gradient of one function, find the gradient of the constraining function, and then set them proportional to each other. That's the, that's the key takeaway. And then the rest of it is just, you know, making sure that we check our work and go through the minute details, which is important. It has its place. And coming up, I'll go through a few more examples.